it, Ερθεί, 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 είναι αφέ. Τι άμα μικροφώνεις σχέτης. Απορώ, <laughs> Ερθεί ορί, ερθεί ορί, τσέμ ζε του είδα. Πάτε σμάς μου, τα σταβάρια, τα τσέμι, του πλήντε, παμάρα, άρα ουσιαστά, με τσούμα του κοινέβη. Είναι ορμαλουρία.
Sí, sí. Sí, 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 Es tau tai, es la gau testet, sau rot ismis. Schöneri. Da? Da, da, sora da, kem deba, ise va ked. Anu, ista kam ok.
ఏర్తి 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 ఒరిస్తాం ఏర్తి ఒరిస్తామి ఏర్తి ఒరిస్తామి ఏర్తి 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 ఓరి ఏర్తి 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 ఓరి Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's a very nice moment. I have to open this great event. Uh, I am Pata, Pata Papava, from Teamboat, a company. I'm a managing partner of Teamboat, the company of team builders and facilitators. I'm really honored to facilitate this event, to be the co-facilitator. of this event. Now let's start with the climate. Some people were saying it's a formal event. Others were saying it's very informal. So there's a headache for me, whether lead it as a formal one or an informal one. Let's go in between. Let's start with the weather. From zero to five, let me ask you, and it's all voluntary, of course, From zero to five, what is the weather outside? Zero. Let me ask you to vote. Five. 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 Fascinating, really. Good weather outside. Now, let me ask you to look into your heart inside. What is the weather in your heart now, at this moment, from zero to five? Ten. Fives. Fives. So the weather, the climate, the psychological climate is great. Good. Good. Let's zoom out a little bit and look at your project, which has this long title, Circular Business Models and Resource Efficiency for Competitiveness and Growth of the T&A Industry in the Eastern Partnership Countries. Great title. Love it. Very informative, at least. Now let's zoom out and look at that project. How is it going now from zero to five? What is the weather on the project? Nobody's voting? What does that mean? Four, four, four. That's why we are here. Maybe we can do something to make it five. Let's do that. Let's share everything that could be improved. Let's share the information, insights, thoughts, emotions that could be useful and helpful to make it five. Five plus. Now, let me start the formal procedure. Dear guests, I am delighted to welcome you all to the regional hybrid event organized by Reconomy, which is the Green and Inclusive Economic Development Program. Welcome to this magnificent city of Tbilisi, Georgia. Thank you. This is a city to applaud, actually. We are incredibly grateful for your presence today. This regional hybrid event, it's hybrid really, we have people online. Green stitching the Eastern Partnership countries circular leap in the textile and apparel industry, organized by Reconomy, is set to explore the sustainability potential of the region within the textile 
and apparel industry. The event is organized in the frame of the project, let me not repeat the title, which is great. We are bringing together like-minded change makers of the region to jointly discuss challenges and seize regional opportunities for sustainability in the textile and apparel industry. Over the next few hours, and let me ask to show the agenda on the screen, and many thanks to Anna for being so organized and cooperative in designing this whole event, including the agenda. Let me give the floor of a, of a, of a applaud to her. Great collaboration. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, over the next hours, we have a program packed with insightful presentations, thought-provoking discussions, and valuable networking opportunities. This event will serve as a platform for strategic dialogue, knowledge exchange, and regional collaboration. Your presence and insights would be invaluable as we endeavor to collectively foster a sustainable future for the Eastern Partnership Program. Thank you once again for joining us. I wish you a productive and enriching experience. Thank you so much. So, what's on the agenda? Let's have a quick look at the, at the, at the, at the uh, items on the agenda. It's really insightful. Uh, we will have welcoming remarks coming soon uh, by Mrs. Tina Tin Genebashvili, Embassy of Sweden, Tbilisi, Georgia. Uh, followed by uh, welcoming again words from Mr. Paolo Rodriguez, Head of Reconomy, Helveta Swiss Development Organization. After that, we will have the set of uh, very good presentations coming from uh, Anna Latsabidze. Where's Anna? Uh, Ellen Manukian, Fashion and Design Chamber of Armenia. Uh, Roman Bagnaru, Training and Consultancy Center, East Circular. And uh, Annie Mamikonian and Margarita Petrosian, National Polytechnic University of Armenia. After that, we have planned a panel discussion. A panel discussion uh, led by, facilitated by Elena Tlachidze, Helveta Swiss Intercooperation, with, uh, with uh, speakers uh, uh, Bahan Khachaturian, Fashion and Design Chamber of Armenia, Gvan Samiladze, Export Development Association of Georgia, Rati Kiria, Investment Analyst, and Nino Giorgadze, Sustainable Sewing Enterprise Leader. This, the panel will be followed by Q&A session. We hope for your proactive engagement and interaction. So please think about questions. And we will have some more questions after the lunch break, led by Teamboat, my company with a team from uh, for the, of uh, facilitators that support us to make it all smooth and effective. And we will lead the networking activities. And I promise you will be fascinated. The only thing you will need to do after the lunch break, engage, be present, that's it. The rest is promised. Hello. Really? Really. So then, then we will have the World Cafe, which we call Sustainability Cafe. And we will have a very interesting interactive collaborative activity here, discussing the aspects of uh, sustainability in uh, groups and making short presentations. And we will be supported by, by our expert, Chris Coleman, uh, it was a pleasure and an honor to collaborate with him during planning of this uh, activity. And then our expert will, will continue the session, a special session about uh, sustainability in the field. 
and we will have fascinating uh, session full of insights. So here's the agenda, and we will wrap up in the end, of course. From Team Boat, we really want to consolidate this great event with a very interesting and very, very informal activity. But let's see how it proceeds. If we get to the stage when we are so much networked, the cohesion is so high that we can play informal games, here we are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And let me now ask to ask uh, Mrs. Tina Tingenebashvili. Good morning, everyone. Uh, both online and here in person. Uh, it's very hard to take the stage after such energy, but I'll try to keep the energy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here today on behalf of the Embassy of Sweden and Swedish International Development Agency, which is supporting this program, Reconomy. Uh, I extend a warm welcome to all of you, all participants. Um, and uh, this initiative uh, is a part of a bigger program, as I said, Reconomy, which is not, which is implemented not only in Eastern Partnership, but also Western Balkan regions. And it again symbolizes that Sweden, along with the EU, is one of the biggest supporters of both these regions to come closer to the EU and get our companies, private sector, governments to be, you know, um, up to date to what's happening in the EU. And one of the biggest things that's happening in the EU is some of you might know is EU Green Deal. And you know, turning our um, business conduct more green and sustainable, as long as we also wanna continue to be in the EU will be uh, an integral part of our work. And I'm very happy is that we have the opportunity to do this very responsible program with an organization such as Helvetas. And I just want to draw your attention how we work with this program, which is very different of how our programs work. And this approach is called market systems approach. So in this case, both SIDA and Helvetas does not come with a solution like we should do this, like our project has this written out for you. No, it everything happens on the contrary. We first come to you, we first delve, you know, what problems do you have? How can we support you? How can we best aid you? And then the program is designed. So it's adaptive all the way until the end. And then uh, when we hear Sweden, I guess for many of you, it sounds that Sweden is a leader in this, you know, sustainable textile and uh, circular um, economy. So I think it gives another level of motivation for us to have this kind of a uh, partner um, as uh, to Georgia, Eastern Balkans, Eastern um, uh, Europe and the Western Balkans. Uh, so uh, again, I wish you a very successful event. I really ask for all of you to be engaged throughout the program because this program is all about partnerships. We can't do it alone. Uh, Helveras cannot do it alone. So I hope that we all uh, work on this together and achieve great results and uh, do a little green stitching to the textile industry in Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, Tina Tin, for the for welcoming and uh, for uh, for 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 telling us the encouraging words and uh, it's it's of course very helpful. And uh, now let me ask uh, Mr. Paulo Rodriguez uh, to welcome the event and participants. There we go. Um, for the launch of this uh, of this project of economy on the textile industry. Um, so let me start with something that I'm often questioned about people often come to me and ask me, Paulo, 
what is Reconomy? What is Reconomy doing? And, um, and Reconomy is, uh, is a program of the Swedish International Development and Cooperation Agency, CEDA, that works uh, in two regions. We work in the Western Balkans region and in the Eastern Partnership uh, with one single goal, one objective that it's common to the two regions, which is to foster economic opportunities uh, for youth, women, and focusing on those that come from disadvantaged uh, backgrounds. So um, Reconomy does this through a close collaboration with uh, what we call market actors in the, um, in the, um, in the two regions. And um, as our colleague uh, Tina Tin was, was, was mentioning before, it is very important to us that initiatives are not, are not generated, are not coming and emerging from Reconomy, but rather emerging from, from actors in the region and ideas that come from the region and that we try to support and aim and scale up for the, for the benefit of our target group. Uh, Reconomy has a regional nature that I think is very well illustrated in today's event. I would like to, to, to take a moment to appreciate the presence here with us today of colleagues, of companies, of organizations from around the Eastern Partnership. We have colleagues here from, uh, from Moldova, colleagues from Armenia that are joining here today as well, obviously colleagues from, from Georgia. Um, but also we have online presence of, uh, of, um, of organizations and partners of Reconomy in Ukraine, uh, to whom I would like to, to say a very, a very warm thank you and, uh, and, and appreciate your participation in Reconomy. So the work, the regional work, as I said, is something that really characterizes Reconomy and that we truly believe can be a catalyst for the long lasting change that we want to see in sectors, including um, the, the textile sector. We believe in the power of, uh, of regionality and in the power of sharing um, experiences, sharing ways of addressing common problems that can come from this, this type of collaboration and, uh, and sharing of experience between, uh, between organizations. Um, one thing that often, often looks good on speeches is to quote someone. And, and finally, yesterday I was reading uh, about a, a company, an organization in Switzerland that's called the South Pole, um, the South Pole Organization. And, uh, and the, the CEO of this organization was saying um, in, a, in, a, in an interview recently that um, climate change is the biggest opportunity that businesses face in our, in our age. And I think that this is a really interesting way of looking at climate change. And I think that this is particularly true for the, for the textile industry. And seeing climate change obviously as a challenge, as a risk that we all face, but at the same time as an opportunity that might come for businesses that really focusing, focus on addressing this, this challenge. So Reconomy is here to, to support organizations that have this kind of aspiration, uh, organizations that aim to contribute to regional economic development. We aim at supporting organizations along the continuous of the of labor market insertion. We, we aim at supporting training institutions and capacitating labor force to enter this market. We aim at strengthening sector associations, private companies um, to provide better opportunities, better jobs for, for these professionals. And we aim at also working with business associations with with civil society organizations, with governments, to improve the regulatory uh, frameworks that uh, that manage and that govern these these sectors. So I think I've I've said enough. I don't want to take this introduction forever, but uh, but just a final word to 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 thank you all for gracing us with with your presence here today. It's lovely to see all chairs uh, occupied in a full in a full house to talk about what we can do to improve the textile sector in the region. And um, yes, I wish everyone a very productive, a very insightful day. I hope that you get 
a lot of opportunities to network, but I'm holding you responsible for making that happen. You put the bar quite high and I like it. So I wish everyone a very productive day and um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, when, when reading through the documents in the preparation phase, when listening to people, to stakeholders, to experts, uh, th th there is a big focus on the changes. What is changing in the industry? And let me ask you to reflect, maybe think about one valuable essential change that is going right now in the industry and why you think it's valuable and what are the values driven by the change? Because uh, throughout the day, throughout the event, we will be focusing on different systemic changes and shifts that are uh, that make impact. Uh, and the next section is also based on that. Producing systemic change, circular business models and resource efficiency for competitiveness and growth in the textile and apparel industry. The session, this session, explores Reconomy's objectives and essential steps taken to facilitate an accelerated green and inclusive development in the textile and apparel industry, seen though, through the lens of an inclusive market systems approach. So this is the focus of the next set of presentations. And let me ask to open this section, to start the section, Anna Lasabitze. Thank you very much. I'm a bit nervous, to be honest, because it's a quite good, uh, how to say, it's a uh, responsibility to tell about the project which we which we are working and implementing. And it's really, um, what was the difficult, I will say, to work on a project which is uh, on market systems development, and we have to tell it in an easy way, in an easy word. So it was the most biggest challenge what i wanted to say so i will briefly tell you and if you have questions about the project and the program you can just go through it and i'm happy that all of you are here uh, and also i want to um, mention that our online participants who are up to 20 they are also joining us and yeah okay i'll start sorry Okay, first of all, I have a question to you. How many times a day do you sleep into textiles? If you thought about it. So I think everyone, it's everyday life's kind of fundamental element of our everyday life and our clothing, wardrobes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Cars also in airplane seats. So textiles are everywhere. So textiles are the fundamental part of our everyday life and the global economic and the biggest part of global economy. So what is the current state of the play in textile and apparel industry? Uh, unfortunately, it's eight to 10% of global carbon emissions in this industry and 1.7 billion tons in carbon annually, which is a very huge number. So I'm not the expert in it, but I will say it's a very huge number. number yes, it is. <laughs> and the fashion industry is the third most polluting industry in the world and with 2.5 trillion in global annual revenues. And what is the most important part and which is linked to our project also, we have a lot of employment opportunities here for women and for also youth. At 80%, yes, 80% 80 of textile workers are women and 120,000 plus people are involved in this EAP industry. What else we can tell about the Eastern partnership sector? So the fashion industry is an export-oriented sector and we have mixed destinations here. EU holds a leading role for Moldova, for example, and for Ukraine, 60%, and for Moldova, over 80%. While in Armenia, they are uh, more oriented on the high value products and mass production goes to Russia. And Turkey is a key trade partner for Georgia. What, uh, so what I want to say through this is that Eastern partnership is expert oriented sector and that's why our our project is focused on access to export facilitation and export growth uh, 
So this is the circular economy, how it looks like. So unlike the traditional linear economic model based on take, make, consume, throw away, sorry, uh, pattern, a circular economy is based on sharing, leasing, reusing, refer refurbishment, and recycling in almost closed loops. So we can, with the circular economy models, we can use textiles again and again and recycle them as much as possible. So this is, it implies reducing waste to minimum. So several trends in the region act as a potential drivers of change within the sector, and the access to EU market is becoming strategically important while environmental sustainability is gradually considered to be a key prerequisite. So if enterprises, if small and medium enterprises wants to export their products to EU, they have to be sustainable in some points, yeah. So after this, we started implementing our project, which is about circular business models and resource efficiency in textile and apparel industry. And aim is to make the sector in Eastern Partnership countries in Moldova, Ukraine, Armenia, and Georgia, to make it more sustainable and resilient sector in context of sustainability. So main objective of it is to facilitate this introduction of CBMs and resource efficiency and access to international markets. So who are our target groups? Our target groups are women and youth and especially most disadvantaged and excluded groups. And um, I will tell you how we are working with women empowerment organizations, for example, in this sector to include women and youth and to be more inclusive and sustainable as a program and as a project also. Before I move on to the constraints which we identified at market, uh, at market research, I will briefly overview who drives the TND industry towards sustainability. So there are different market, not market actors, but let's say actors who have influence on the sustainability, who has influence on the textile and apparel and move to uh, sustainability and green production. They are textile manufacturers, recycling companies, they are Sustainable fashion brands, government also has a biggest influence on it, SMEs, academia also on skills development and competences and etc. So all of these sectors are interconnected to each other. For example, sectoral associations are working with small and medium enterprises, academia is working with government, government is working with CSOs and etc. So they have a lot of interconnections, but unfortunately, there these red lights are constraints, what we identified and what we want to tackle. Um, I mean, the frame of our project and also in our program. So in 2023, we identified common problems and common opportunities for Eastern Partnership countries in textile and apparel industry. And these constraints uh, were much, I mean, they were many, but now I will tell you key problems, what were identified in this regard. So first problem, which was identified through our, uh, through our stakeholders was shortage of green skilled workforce in TND industry in the Eastern partnership countries, which was caused by lack of educational services and programs on sustainability and green in TND industry. Here, what we mean, unfortunately, there is lack, and in some cases, in some countries, there is absence of educational services who is focused on sustainability and green in textile and apparel industry. So how do we tackle this constraint that we are working with non-formal and formal educational institutions, we're working with sectoral associations and private sector companies who are also members of sectoral associations. And what uh, our intervention aims is to develop demand-driven and affordable, which is really important part, educational and matchmaking services in TND industry in Eastern Partnership four countries, Moldova, Ukraine, Armenia, and Georgia. Uh, so wh why it's important to make it demand driven and not doing just a sustainable short courses or curriculas or educational services. It's important to have this uh, students who complete the course um, have the opportunity to get employment uh, opportunities again to private sector companies. And we are also facilitating the matchmaking services, which means that private sector through associations sectoral associations through private sector are helping uh, our target groups to get employment opportunities in textile and apparel, in sustainability and green part. 
So what was the second constraint which was identified? It was limited information and understanding on international standards in Moldova, Armenia, Ukraine, and Georgia, again, in pre-selected for EIP countries, caused by of a lack of consulting business services on international standards and compliance. So here we mean there were no in some cases, the same lack or absence of this kind of services uh, and SMEs didn't have this kind of opportunity to go there to have, uh, it wasn't the problem about investment. So uh, SMEs once after, I mean, just sorry, just moving from one to another, uh, another thing, but uh, SMEs want to invest in this eco certifications, but it's access to finance is not a problem at this time. Ex um, problem is that there is no consulting business services. And also it's worth to mention that there is language barriers. So they want to uh, get the services into their languages. So English is not okay with them. They do not have information. So there is a lot of constraints which is linked to this uh, problem and challenge. So what we're doing here and how we tackle this constraint, we're working same with sectoral associations and private sector companies. And we're developing a demand-driven consulting business services in the 10-day industry in these partnership countries. So here, it's also important to make needs assessment first and then uh, develop, design, develop, and then deploy this consulting business services for sectoral associations, which will have the sustainable impact on the sector at all. And what was the third uh, problem? It's lack of institutional influences caused by lack or absence of legislative frameworks. Here, I would like to mention that Armenia is a bit step forward because uh, they adopted a strategy on textile and apparel industry development uh, for 2023-2026. And uh, they start implementation process of this uh, strategy. This means that they can share this knowledge to other countries, their retrospective, their experience, and it's the uh, they can serve as a role model for other countries. So we, we're taking this as an opportunity and we're working with uh, sectoral associations from Armenia about this regard. Unfortunately, in other countries, there is not lack, but absence of this kind of legisl legislative framework. So we are tackling this constraint, working with public institutions, with sectoral associations, and also private sector companies. And we are strengthening the accountability of TNDA sector through effective oversight of the key actors in the EAP countries which means that we're working with sectoral associations, we're capacitating them how to do advoca uh, advocacy on different initiatives, and they will be the leaders who will take this opportunity and who will advocate all this initiative as a one uh, association, as a one organization. So nowadays there is no leader at the sector, so someone should lead the sector in Eastern Partnership countries. So why I mentioned these three constraints, because we're working on three work streams and each of them was the example of this each uh, work stream. First is competences, which is which is about skills development. We're going to tackle lack like, of green and sustainable skills and skills mismatch in the TNDA industry. Second one is about services. We're going to develop new improved services for the private sector growth. And the third one is influences. We're advocating for improvement of the regulatory environment. And the last part, if public and private Partners improve the design, access, use of business and technology services. If private and public partners improve affordable and demand-driven skills intermediation services and support systems, and if they improve the indus industry or firm-specific business enables the environment, then private sector enterprises will invest and adopt improved new services into their operations. Target groups increase their skills as well as well as access and use intermediation services, support systems, and private sector enterprises will have better policy support and increase their efficiency. So everything what I talked about will contribute to the generation of better. I'm also nervous that it's really... Yeah, exciting to read all of this, actually. Yeah. The generation of better income and design green jobs inclusively and sustainably in TNDA industry in the Eastern Partnership countries. And what we are doing as a program, as a project, we're not 
uh, instead of quick fixes and treating the symptoms, we seek to address the root causes of exclusion and dysfunction with long-term solutions. So this is the value of what we're doing with the sector, with a project. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, and uh, for, uh, for, for talking about uh, the constraints and the challenges overcome. Sounds a good, uh, sounds very um, uh, um, insightful, I would say, and inspiring for the leaders in the industry. Now, let me ask uh, Elaine Manukian, the Fashion and Design Chamber of Armenia. Hello. Uh, thanks uh, all of you for this opportunity. It's a pleasure for us to present Armenian industry here. And uh, for this opportunity also, I would like to thank Helvetas because we have a good partnership with the, the Reconomy Helvetas team for more than three years. And it was a good continuation of this uh, collaboration because we started with a pilot small project, then enlarged the scope in the regional perspective, working with, uh, having a chance in working with Moldovian partner, which uh, enlarged the scope of our collaboration. And now we are more happy to be here and continue uh, this collaboration together with the Georgian partners and see uh, what we can do together, work in the, for the benefit of the industry, because for us, a regional co collaboration is very important. Okay, I will go through a presentation of a chamber, since most of the audience is not aware of our association, then um, just present a small project uh, in a short project, which Anna already, uh, give some highlighting points. Well, uh, Fashion and Design Chamber, it's a relatively new association. We have founded it in 2017 with the main mission to strengthen the Armenian fashion textile sector by enabling it to be fully embedded in the local and international creative ecosystem. Our vision uh, is uh, to be the leading organization in Armenia that unites fashion and design professionals to build a sustainable industry and position the Armenian creative uh, sector as an ethically competitor in the international market. Uh, today, we are happy to say that we have uh, a full coverage of the sector representatives, starting from the designers, small businesses, up to big textile companies. And also, we work very closely with the institutions of the sector and the students uh, to cover all sector and uh, their needs. We have more than 250 representatives of, in our membership. Uh, the main objectives of the uh, association is to improve the overall uh, collaboration among sector representatives locally and internationally because we, we work with many international organizations and we are part of this uh, global network. Uh, to present the international Armenian fashion design sector in international markets, uh, we are actively working on taking our uh, businesses to international trade shows, um, fashion events, uh, to provide them a platform for presentation. To develop a member's skills and capacities, you know, we work on a lot of capacity building programs in bringing international experience to Armenia and uh, trying to support our designers uh, to improve their skills. To participate in public-private dialogue and advocate for the sector's issues in uh, relevant decision makers. Here, I am happy to say that uh, we, have, we were the initiators of the textile strategy with the government and we are lobbying for the start of this initiative because it has it will have a huge impact on the industry overall uh, with the, the help of the government engagement uh, here. 
um, then to improve the competitiveness of the uh, sector, to build the bridges between education and um, business. Uh, we work ver very closely with the, the Academy of Art, uh, with the, the other uh, colleges in Armenia, in Yerevan, and in the regions as well, to support uh, the capacity building. And uh, of course, to raise awareness about environmental issues uh, and sustainability projects, because it's relatively new uh, concept for Armenia. And uh, the first stage is here we consider to work on starting from the awareness raising and then uh, go on with uh, concrete activities. Uh, these are some achievements that we have reached uh, for the five, six years. Uh, we have presented uh, our uh, fashion industry representatives in different fashion events in Milan, in Paris, in Moscow, in USA, in Athens, and um, it's uh, number one uh, uh, direction that we think that is very important for the industry to start uh, international uh, access. Um, we work uh, very closely with uh, mostly all international organizations that are um, working in Armenia. We work very closely with GIZ, with EU, uh, with the British Embassy, and we are happy to work with Helvetas and uh, uh, a lot of uh, international organizations who support uh, us in implementing a lot of projects. Uh, of course, I have mentioned on capacity building initiatives, trainings, workshops. Uh, uh, before COVID, we were the initiators of uh, fashion forums twice uh, um, in 2019 and 18, and uh, it was uh, again another big um, event for Armenia because we host more than 20 international experts uh, uh, to the country uh, who did a lot of master classes and portfolio reviews for the designers, uh, which has a good impact on continuation of their development of their capacities. Uh, for the first time uh, last year, we are happy to also present uh, our big project, the establishment of Yerevan Fashion Week which uh, was the first time last year that we initiated and uh, we are going to continue this uh, throughout the years. Uh, this year we are planning to do it in autumn and then continue it for the next years. Uh, it's a good platform again for our um, designers to present them and we were happy last year to have more than 25 international press to come to Armenia and uh, to cover the event, starting from Vogue Italia, Mary Claire Italia, and many well-known uh, international um, press media representatives. Uh, and uh, among our last year um, good success events uh, and uh, initiatives was also establishment of CRELAP, it's a laboratory, physical location, uh, which is again a big uh, workshop area for our designers and also for students uh, to come to uh, experience their practices, to learn and uh, a network for the uh, overall sector. Uh, about some of the main constraints. Actually, Anna has mentioned uh, some of them, which are uh, the same in the regional level, but uh, we have also um, specific um, problems uh, that the sector has. One of the main constraints that I would like to mention here is the limited access to international market due to various uh, barriers, such as logistic, which is a very problem for Armenia especially uh, for the last uh, years. Uh, then we have a lot of trade regulations um, which should be improved and uh, tariffs also. Small domestic market uh, which uh, limits the scale of production and potential customers base for the local businesses. 
lack of infrastructure, uh, production facilities, networks, uh, transportation, uh, marketing channels, um, which again are some barriers for the industry. Uh, skills gap, with, which I think is everywhere, lack of specialized skills and uh, training, and uh, training uh, specialized uh, organizations, training providers of the sector that would work directly for uh, sectorial businesses, because uh, uh, we all understand that um, this is, should have a specific approach, not a general for the marketing, for the production and from the innovative perspective as well. Uh, dependency on imports because uh, Armenia is very landlocked in itself and we also do not have a raw material production so we import everything, uh, fabrics, materials, machinery and it increases the production cost uh, and uh, puts uh, supply chain distributions. Uh, limited brand recognition, um, uh, since our target is to go to international market, we need to uh, hear a huge marketing campaign uh, to um, provide us an access to international market. And limited some support ecosystem, like uh, lack of a comprehensive support ecosystem, including some pro programs, etc. all um, Mostly all of the programs that uh, exist in Armenia are um, lobbied by uh, Fashion Chamber. And uh, we are happy to say here that uh, for the last two years, uh, a lot of uh, international organizations put access to the development of textile industry. It is connected, to, of course, with the government initiative. And uh, we hope that for the upcoming two, three years, this uh, sectorial support will, will increase and uh, the impact will be on the sector. Uh, now coming to our uh, project with the economy, um, uh, I put a shorter name, <laughs> building green uh, skilled workforce uh, in the in textile and industry for competitiveness and sector growth. Uh, the uh, objective is to highlight the gap in the environmental conscious private sector entities uh, within the countries. And we have a big, um, uh, goal here to develop the partnership, uh, um, especially uh, projects uh, are uh, narrow from its scope on uh, putting a lot of sustainability under the um, basis. That's why um, we are interested in this collaboration on a regional level. Um, Objective is to promote sustainability and competitiveness. And our partnership ob objective is to build uh, also our capacity, as I said, uh, to have this platform of collaboration, experience exchange on the regional level, which uh, I think will be important for also our organizations to develop our skills and then share it within the sector. Uh, our partnership is uh, to develop, uh, these are, this is all, all the specific um, parts of the project. Uh, we are going to develop uh, the green sustainable curriculum with our partners, uh, then enabling access to training and opportunities for the SMEs in sharing the sustainability experience and knowledge from the international practice and bringing to our country. Uh, supporting women, youth, disadvantaged individuals in the employment, as we all know and uh, also have been stressed here that um, most of this sector are uh, employed by the women. And then designing guidebooks for the small, uh, micro, small and small businesses and uh, sharing it without, with, uh, within our members. And transforming um, as a final our association and trying at least to uh, transform the sector to better green um, practices. Uh, 
As I said, we are going to implement the activities through capacity building um, projects. We are going to do some survey uh, and it will be on the regional level uh, to see also identify uh, key problems that exist in uh, countries um, and work together. Uh, empowering sustainability through collaborations or uh, uh, curriculums and circulate these curriculums within the uh, in ed institutional um, educational uh, service providers. Uh, we are going to provide uh, to develop first of all an internship program for uh, the educational. Uh, institutions and support the network between the uh, businesses and educational um, institutions uh, to improve their internship opportunities because we have this gap in Armenia. Uh, our education institutions do not have a full internship opportunities within their curricular uh, curriculum and we think that it is very important to uh, establish this structure and uh, uh, follow its uh, continuation and implementation because it's a very important for the uh, young generation uh, to have this practice before entering to the market. And um, innovative knowledge exchange for strengthening green fashion SMEs. Uh, this is a very interesting part of our project because we are going to collaborate on a regional level and uh, uh, improve our skills on innovation and sustainability with our partner from Italy uh, and its um, experience study uh, visit exchange project uh, which we are going to implement and uh, we are happy that uh, this will be not only for uh, us like for our association for Armenia but it is for uh, all our regional partners from Georgia, Moldova, Ukraine, and of course, uh, Armenia. And uh, also uh, Denim Cycle, it's another program, a project that uh, we initiated with our uh, economy consultation because uh, all uh, countries, especially Armenia, we lack awareness uh, within the sector on this concept sustainability and we want with this uh, big campaign which named Denim Cycle to share um, information and raise information awareness uh, on sustainability in fashion industry. Uh, this is from Anna's presentation part, if and then. Uh, this is the then of the final part. Uh, as a result of this project, we hope and we will do our best to for the private uh, textile companies to improve their performance in the context, the context of sustainability uh, by offering them better green services. Uh, and as a result, uh, the Skills providers will, of course, offer better services, which are come from a demand, and um, which will include, of course, the, the curriculum that they will improve uh, and provide to the sector. And the target group uh, make use of these trainings and the internship opportunities and uh, will benefit by the end uh, as a more sustainable SMEs of the sector. This is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, being the specialist in the field of education, uh, I, I, I really enjoy reading that something somewhere needs to be learned. Something new has to be learned. A new curriculum designed is on the way. It's fascinating. Thank you, Ellen. And now we listen to Roman Bahnaru, Training and Consultancy Center, e Circular, Moldova. Um, I am uh, represent the Training uh, Center, e Circular. Uh, maybe our center is not focused only on on fashion, like our partners in this project in economy. But uh, we think uh, our um, center, it is the right partner to implement the um, 
skills trainings at national level uh, and i will show uh, our experience uh, as you can see uh, from our name is e circular we are focused on uh, circularity um, we are uh, ngo uh, with uh, 10 years experience in um, waste management and circularity uh, we promote at national level um, circular economy principles um, we provide services, um, training services, awareness campaign, um, like a think tank uh, to all sectors of the economy. Uh, our services are designed to help companies adopt more sustainable and circular pra practice through, the, uh, through their operations. And um, uh, um, we implemented uh, many projects. Uh, not only on circularity, not only on waste man management, uh, but also we uh, develop um, uh, study cases uh, for ministry, for uh, central authority. Uh, we collaborate with um, many stakeholders at national level, like ministry, uh, like, um, um, like environment agency, uh, also, we collaborate with universities, schools, um, and also we are part of um, regional and international uh, our uh, alliance, like uh, waste alliance, uh, break free from plastic, or other. Uh, if we speak about trainings, uh, we uh, have uh, free accredited courses. I will uh, detail uh, this type of courses. And um, um, uh, as you can see, we provided last, I think, last three, four years, um, a training for free, for about 300 participants training. Uh, at our courses, we uh, speak about uh, waste management legislation, uh, um, eco label, national eco label, or EU eco label. Um, at our course, uh, we provide uh, principles related to extended uh, uh, producer responsibility, uh, legal co uh, compliance. Um, I think uh, many of you uh, know in some uh, European countries, um, um, some European countries uh, speak about EPR for fashion, for textile and apparel. Um, and um, of course, um, uh, at our course, we speak about ESG uh, because um, um, related to GSRD directive, Corporate Social um, Responsibility Directive, um, Moldovan uh, companies uh, will um, work with European countries and this directive uh, um, are... Um, 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 a request uh, for um, European countries to have partners outside of countries also related to greening of the business. And um, I think for um, um, for Europe, for Moldovian companies, they uh, also must to know uh, proactively uh, how to comply with this, um, uh, these requests. Um, about constraint, about constraint was mentioned um, um, uh, today, and uh, as you can see here, we have um, some of them, but not not uh, not all constraint, uh, which uh, uh, has a, a company uh, in fashion or TNA industry. Uh, the first uh, lake, of course, is um, lake of in infrastructure. Okay, uh, lake of infrastructure, infrastructure, it is not mm, the only uh, constraint, uh, only in fashion in the Republic of Moldova, but I think not only Moldova, but worldwide, because as, as we know, only 1% of, um, of um, uh, textile apparel or um, clothes are recycled, uh, but uh, we must to think in advance when we speak about uh, design um, uh, stage in um, 
uh, in designing the apparel. Um, and uh, the second constraint, of course, is um, um, related to um, uh, SME uh, um, constitute a significant portion of the TNA sector in Moldova, but uh, they face financial constraint because they are small. Um, also, uh, TNA companies um, uh, adopt uh, very difficult uh, ECO certification um, because uh, also they uh, have constraints related to the skills and also uh, to financing uh, um, constraints. And of course, uh, when we speak about uh, sustainability, um, workforce is one of the most uh, in, um, one of the most big constraint or change related to um, greening uh, um, or green skills and uh, um, it is important to provide courses uh, related to these uh, green skills um, at um, e circular um, center we provide training services uh, also we um, speak and we teach regulatory comp uh, compliance uh, what is important to mention in our teams uh, we have experts in legal compliance professor at uh, the university environment experts data analyst experts and um, many of them um, have uh, PhD degree and uh, they teach at the university and um, we are uh, correct um, we are, um, we know uh, all new com new regulatory um, uh, requ request at national level but not only at national level but also we monitor all changes at uh, European level um, another um, point is certification uh, certification guidance uh, we provide the uh, green uh, greening um, business um, uh, trainings uh, and also we uh, we speak about eco labeling um, at national level because it, it was um, adopted at national level uh, last year a new eco label certification and also we speak about business cases and business modeling um, for the business. And um, key, key issues to propose to be addressed through uh, TNA um, business sector, uh, you can see we uh, must to uh, teach and to, um, uh, to address uh, uh, um, problems or challenges at uh, different stages of um, life, life cycle of the product. Uh, first, uh, we can see uh, wasted uh, capacity or uh, proactively eco design for TNA sectors. Uh, and here uh, we must to speak about production and logistics. After what, we must to um, speak about. Um, uh, uh, life cycle of the product and here we can see marketing and um, uh, sales uh, at um, marketing we we must to to promote non green washing or our activity or maybe uh,
and of course to guide business to get eco certification like eco certification as you can see it is a very challenge for all uh, of the business not only in T uh, tna but um, it is important to to help them uh, that's all if you have if you um, have some questions or we will speak uh, in the coffee break okay oh thank, thank you, you. <clears throat> thank you thank you roman and uh, yeah one of the uh, one of the most interesting uh, theories, I would say, of change that I've uh, visited uh, recently is the U theory by Otto Scharmer. Maybe you've heard about that from MIT. And uh, the key slogan of it is uh, moving from ecosystems to new ecosystems. And it's always good to see it in different fields, in different industries, how this shift is changing the world. Thank you very much. Through training, reflection, awareness building and so on. Thank you. And now Ani Mamikonian and Margarita Petrosian, National Polytechnic University of Armenia. Uh, hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here, to be part of this big Recall Me family here. And we are representing National Polytechnic University of Armenia, uh, which is, uh, thanks to Helvetas Recall Me project, implements two parallel projects within this economy program. The first is devoted to the energy efficiency um, uh, program. Uh, and the next one that we are implementing, uh, it is the uh, program in uh, textile and apparel industry within the mini industry project represented to uh, to the Recomi project. So uh, first of all, before going to dive deep into our textile industry, mini industry project, I would like uh, to represent our university a little bit. Uh, so National Polytechnic University of Armenia is uh, oh, almost a hundred year old university uh, established in 1933. Um, uh, and firstly, it was one faculty of chemical engineering with 107 students. As you see at this moment, we have the eight more than 8,000 students enrolled at our university and the graduation alumni population covers uh, almost 1,030 hundred uh, providing the workforce starting from the engineering, textile uh, and uh, technical uh, spheres. So we have three branches located in the three main regions uh, of Armenia. They are Gyumri, Vanadzor and Kapan. And with Gyumri branch uh, known from the Soviet uh, times uh, uh, as the center of textile industry, we, are, uh, we have launched this project. And uh, we are a unique university and we believe that the technical and engineering uh, education should be equipped and should be uh, seeded uh, from the very young stage of uh, young engineers. That's why we cover all the cycles of the education starting from the kindergarten and then th this uh, children, these kids can pursue their education path through the secondary school, high school, college, uh, university, covering three levels of education, of uh, higher education, bachelor, master, and PhD uh, programs. Uh, so going to dive deep into the mini industry project, I invite my colleague Margarita, who will uh, represent in details why, what, and how we are doing to deal with this project. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ani. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity of being here. I would like to present our project, which is about mini industry. I would like to go in a more chronological way. Uh, starting how we started the program, how it came to us, and how we are going to implement it. Well, actually, we hear about the uh, Reconomist program on um, building a green skilled workforce for competitiveness and growth in the textile and apparel industry in the Eastern Partnership region. And at once, we decided that, yes, we have this opportunity. 
we have Gyumri branch, which is very famous in its uh, textile industry. And we decided to write a kind of project which will cover everything and will cover all the gaps and constraints that we found out during our path. And uh, a little bit about our project. What we did, first of all, we tried to find out the gaps. Uh, like we have problems in education. We had lots of uh, problems of implementation and particularly problems regarding um, uh, on the practical sphere. And uh, Reconomy came to help us. Um, we decided uh, to, first of all, what is mini industry about? It's about empowering women with new TA and digital skills. Why TA and digital? Because it's 21st century and we cannot deal anything without uh, digital skills. And in order to uh, organize our private business or do any step, we should take into consideration also some digital skills. And um, the mini industry will give us a chance to raise self-confidence, financial independence uh, of women and give them a new opportunity for creating their bright future. So um, our target groups, as you can see, are uh, Nagorno-Karabakh displaced women and youth, Gyumri women and youth, disadvantaged uh, women and youth. Why especially mini industry and why with Recomni? Uh, the partnerships foresees to contribute to the goals to, of the Reconomies as well as to the business activity of Nepua. And eventually, uh, taking into consideration that we have the same vision for future and how to build uh, better economic opportunities for um, our women and youth and mostly disadvantaged ones and excluded ones, we decided to create our mini industry project that we hope uh, soon will have more broader scale and will cover also regional one as a uh, region of EIP as well. So how we see it, uh, that is to say, what result do we expect? We expect that it can be on the individ individual level, either on a group level, how it is. We are, uh, first of all, we'll uh, give necessary TA and digital knowledge to women uh, who later on will open their maybe product pages, maybe in a uh, other way they will, they will find a solution how to, let's say, sell their product and they can do it on an individual level. Or maybe some of them will decide that uh, another idea of creating a group uh, format of pilot project, let's say, prototype of a factory will be better. Like uh, there will be people who will be responsible for digital sector. The rest will be responsible for TA ones, another one for financial component, and they will create their own small uh, prototype of a mini industry of a, let's say, factory. Uh, about regional specificity and sustainability. As mentioned above, Gyumri has proven experience in TA skill development sphere. It is the biggest city in Armenia, and it has a great amount, it hosted great amount of Nagorno-Karabakh displayed women and youth. So um, another very important fact here is that uh, starting this upcoming September, uh, Gyumri branch is going to relaunch a new program in textile and uh, apparel industry and design. And uh, with the help of Reconomy, we are going to develop uh, short courses, uh, green courses, uh, curriculum, which will be a part of uh, this uh, relaunched program. And we are going to implement these courses as well. And we hope that uh, this will be an inspiring and uh, very um, uh, uh, inspiring idea, which the region partners also will take and will decide and will implement during their educational programs as well. So, in order to have a better like understanding what steps and how we are going to do all this, uh, we have these uh, steps. Like first of all, we are going to have a workshop 
in Gyumri. And during this workshop, we are going to raise an awareness to invite participants uh, who are interested in the program, who would like to participate and to develop their skills in, in uh, TA as well as uh, digital sphere. Later on, with the help of Reconomy Camp, we are going to have uh, this uh, short green courses uh, and curriculum, which later will be a part of uh, all already a program for, for a bigger, let's say, scale of sustainability. Uh, and uh, for uh, practical part, we will have um, equipment, necessary equipments, where the, our participants can practice and um, develop their TA skills. And finally, we are going to have, uh, let's say, a short film where we are going to represent our audience, where we started from and how we developed and how we succeed to implement this program. And finally, unfortunately, <laughs> the last slide is not here, but I would like to thank uh, our coordinator, Anna Latadbitze. I don't know where is, is she here or not, but thank you for being so responsive and being with us. Thank you for attention. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now it's it's time, the, the mic, we need the microphone. Thank you. So, if we create the cloud of insights out of this session, what would be the one valuable insight that you have after listening to the presentations here? Again, what are the key shifts in the industry? And who are the leaders? Now, let me ask you to once again, give a, a good floor of, of applause to all uh, to, to, to all presenters here, uh, Anna Latsabidze, Elen Manikian, Roman Barnaro from Moldova, Anima Mikonian and Margarita Petrosian from Armenia. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Um, can we... Question from? From online participants. So it's really hybrid now. Love that. Thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. The question is for uh, Armenian partners, National Polytechnic University of Armenia. And the question is like this. Will the mini industry be able to compete internationally? How is the scaling up and are there any plans for this? This is the question for you. Yes, you can use. To complete, uh, to, to compete internationally? Yes. Of course, message. it will, uh, but uh, not right now because we are in the process of development. Of course, later on, we will organize workshops and competitions as well. So we will, as a next step, as a sustainability part, add, but firstly, we will organize them in locally, have this experience, and then, of course, we will uh, do it in, a, inter, in an international level as well. So I guess the answer is very positive. Sure. Thank you. I like that. Thank you very much. So the, I hope we answered the question. And uh, now it's time to move to the next section of our event. A really, really interesting one. And uh, let me ask uh, Elena Plashidze now, Helveta Swiss Intercooperation, to to lead us into the panel discussion. And uh, the guests for our panel, uh, let me announce them. Mr. Vahan Khachaturian, Fashion and Design Chamber of Armenia. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'll just go. Uh, Mrs. Kvan Sameladze, Expert Development Association of Georgia. Thank you. Mr. Rati Kiria, Investment Analysts. Thank you, Ratu, for being here. And Mrs. Nino Georgadze, Sustainable Sewing Enterprise Leader. Thank you. And the floor is yours. You uh, have the mic. Uh -huh. So thank you in very case, much for it. Uh, okay, good. All set. Thank you. 
So thanks a lot to our facilitator for introducing our panel. We are very excited to be here and to have the session uh, where we'll, we'll be discussing the potential of circularity for the private sector development. In uh, the first part of uh, our presentations, we focused on what Reconomy is already uh, addressing, trying to do in terms of improving the uh, supply of the skills in the textile and apparel industry. There are some activities already outlined, but uh, of course the program is at the beginning of its um, involvement, development, and we're highly interested in understanding what are uh, the challenges in accessing finance uh, to introduce circularity, what are the technologies that are needed, and actually what are the steps that private sector can undertake to make the sector more circular and obviously then have access to opportunities, as Paolo was mentioning in his opening speech, that the trends and changes are indeed opportunities as well. So very excited to have uh, our guests here representing the private sector, representing the voice of the private sector, but also experts in uh, the area of investment and how the environment looks like. So uh, we have some questions uh, to our participants, and I would like to start with maybe the simple, but not so simple in its essence, that... Um, what is it that prevents our textile and apparel companies in adopting the circular business models? And I would like to hear the opinions of uh, Vahan Hachatrian and Nino Kiorgatze uh, from their point of view. Vahan is representing uh, the association, but then Nino, the company, and it would be very good to hear, like, yeah, why not if it's so good? <laughs> I don't know, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Actually, it's uh, great being here and being able to share our experience and to know that we have the same kind of problems and we're not alone in looking for solutions for them. So, and hopefully something positive comes out of this discussion and the event in general and the project in general, let's say. Uh, if we talk about the problems, uh, we come from a place where we have been dealing with these problems for the last uh, six years, and uh, both as an organization, but also uh, as a, as a producer, as a designer myself, I can speak from both sides. I think, and mainly uh, everything in the end uh, comes to finances, because uh, um, we have been trying to work with big organizations. We have been trying to be, we work with SMEs and with the government. And uh, in some cases, it's hard to explain what circular economy is. It's hard to explain what sustainability is, uh, uh, especially if we work with uh, representatives of uh, more Soviet era uh, companies that still operate their work, but they are left very far behind in time. And with the younger, more open generation, it's easier to build a dialogue, but it all always comes to finances. So the first issue for me is uh, the lack of investment, because to be able to pass to a circular economy, uh, it's it's a very expensive uh, experience, actually. And those who have the means, financial means, they don't see the importance of it. These are, again, the more Soviet-era thinking people. And those who actually understand the importance of this do not have the financial uh, means. And they don't have the financial means. That means they don't have uh, modern technology. They don't have access to many new services. You know, So from our point of view, this is the main issue. Thank you very much. Uh, Nino, maybe from uh, your, and then you we'll try to summarize. Yeah. Thank you for organizing you. our donor uh, who creates this project. Uh, so Sewing Leader, um, I'm founder of Sewing Leader, who started recycling systems three years ago. Um, our factory is based in Gori, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, red, uh, the main challenge is, uh, more, more challenges is because we are based in uh, out of uh, capital city uh, and region has a lot of uh, challenges uh, to more than um, capital city. Uh, so um, uh, main challenge, first of all, is the um, lack of uh, finance. Mm -hmm. uh, as 
uh, you told uh, in Georgia also, uh, and uh, we know that shear, uh, care is shear, or uh, shear is care. <laughs> yes, shear is care, and a share of experience is uh, mm, uh, uh, also a uh, main challenge um, for uh, mm. uh, a factory. I'm so sorry that uh, success, only my factor, uh, factory and only our uh, history is um, a success story in Georgia because uh, we know that uh, our um, uh, history and our job is only a spoon of water in ocean. Um, and uh, so it's uh, not important uh, whole industry, but we did it. Mm -hmm. We uh, only small step uh, um, made made, and I hope uh, other uh, factory, other uh, doing uh, uh, so uh, in doing factory um, makes this. Okay, so basically what we heard is that uh, on one hand, there is a lack of investment, uh, the capital is needed to actually introduce circularity, but we also heard that, uh, the, let's say, if there are entities that do have resources, then they don't have an understanding of what would it mean to invest into the circularity and then what would be the profit out of it. We also have in our uh, panelists the experts on investment, uh, Rati, and I would like to understand from your point of view, why then the investment is not taking the place, maybe in addition to lack of understanding, or maybe there are other reasons for that? Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for your invitation. So far, as I see here, we have the main problem, the issue of the financial part. And uh, as an Eastern partnership, the main problems, as I see, there is undeveloped financial platforms. First of all, yes, we have lots of investors. We have lots of venture capitals here, angel investors as well, but we have a problem for stack textile side. So it means that we do not have any, let's say, high technology direction for textile because uh, so far that classic way producing products, classic way to make some innovation part right now is not, let's say, access for the investors to invest the projects where they offer, for instance, the way how was like a, before the traditional part. So I think so that uh, as I see the problem, for example, like uh, several years ago, maybe 10 years ago, there was a problem that uh, the programming part was also not popular in Georgia. So right now, as we see the Eastern Partnership in general programming part, the technology part in Georgia is one of the topest and popular uh, way direction industry and we made this with a for sure the sharing and caring as well that uh, training part additional workspace for beginners and i think that uh, for example the one part i remember right now that there is a european innovation council for instance they already published 2.5 million is a grant but this is accessible only for technology and uh, high tech uh, productions. So far, if we will add some additional value for textile that you can add some technology part, this also available for you as well to apply because the grant is uh, like a, will end end of the October. And this is enough time, for instance, to find a way how the textile and technology can make together to multiply and to receive different way because as i see undeveloped for instance technology part this is a, a direction where we have to invest more because the traditional textile this is already like a old school we need something new in this way because that's why the asia part they dominate for textile producers producing because they have all different new direction how they can produce and produce new let's say materials new style and i think this is kind of the way we have to make more attention yeah the conclusion can be that the finance is accessible, but then the focus is more on the high tech industry, yes. where then the textile sector is uh, operating a little bit 
old fashioned way. So what would be good is to bring the high tech plus uh, textile and then innovate and try to access uh, investment in that area. And I would like to maybe return the question to Vahan and uh, Nino. Like, what could be then the way, like, how can, because it seems like the finance is available, it seems that um, there are possibilities, but they're still not utilized, and what can companies do, or what can we do, or what can other stakeholders do in that uh, area? Like, how can companies overcome these issues of not being able to access the finance, if you um, have <laughs> observations? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Again, let's look it to the perspective uh, of the companies. Let, first of all, big uh, producers like textile companies and SMEs are very different. So the bigger impact of, obviously comes from the big uh, productions because mm -hmm. they are the generators of textile waste uh, and they employ more people. So let's take them into consideration. Most of them work in... Um, uh, linear uh, business model mm -hmm. because uh, for them it's very clear they have been working with this model for decades and they have a setup which works perfectly they have a market which is usually Russia for them and any step to the left or to the right means taking risks which for a huge business mm -hmm. is not something uh, unless they know that it will be um, successful you know but you can never approve uh, the success of uh, this kind of change uh, shift from a linear to a circular uh, production especially not immediately because this will mean finding a new market which has to be equally big like russia mm. and equally ready to pay immediately like russia and uh, sadly we depend on russia i mean that's what our uh, market specific uh, problem is for Armenia. I don't know about the, our other partner countries, but this is uh, one of our biggest problems. We have to uh, try to find new markets and uh, this has to be done uh, gradually. So, uh, and it takes time obviously, but uh, most of the companies, they fear taking this risk. Uh, and uh, when you ask what uh, what technology can do, uh, sadly, most of these big companies, they are already technically very well equipped uh, and they don't have problem investing into technology. They, what they need to invest is uh, in knowledge and into bringing a new way of thinking into the company because, mm -hmm. yes, they have the machinery, they have thousands of workers, and they, but they are doing like the same thing as I have been doing for the last 40 years, you know? So it's more the mindset that has to be changed with the big producers uh, uh, to then invest the finances into the right uh, direction. Mm -hmm. It can be their own finances or it can be any other finances coming mm -hmm. from grant programs or from the um, government. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, with the big companies, it's more a, a problem of a mindset. And again, taking a risk. As a businessman, I understand that because when you have 4,000 workers, you cannot risk, uh, you know, uh, you cannot mm. shift from one market to the other without having guarantees, but no one can give you guarantees. That's a problem. Mm, mm. Thank you. So uh, um, we supported only one government agency. Uh, it's Enterprise Georgia. You were supported by the government yes, agency. So mm -hmm. And the uh, industry uh, supported very much, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, uh, they supported sewing factory, but not uh, uh, recycling system or some fund okay. for only this uh, about this issue. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but because this industry uh, create and because this industry grow grow uh, up, uh, that's uh, why uh, so the, uh, enterprise Georgia supported and that's why uh, we are here and we talk about recycling uh, system. Um, uh, so um, uh, I think uh, that the uh, share of experience uh, because uh, we uh, had uh, uh, one uh, study visit in Germany and uh, it's other uh, level and uh, when we see how to make recycling system, how supported government, how um, uh, uh, is uh, uh, so knowledge uh, um, they have knowledge also uh, we need uh, support for uh, this uh, direction and for this issue 
Uh, I think for our audience, it would also be, be interesting to understand what you do, because um, like we had a previous opinion um, from the Armenian case that you have bigger companies and in a way they could potentially invest, but they hesitate because it's a high risk. You have a lot of employees uh, depending on you and then looking for a new market might be challenging. But then you are telling us that you're already um, like having the sustainable models in uh, place. And I think it would be interesting also to understand whether your company is big or small, whether you relate to the same challenges that have been mentioned about Armenia and then uh, like if you did it, how did you do it and what motivated you? Because we also had a lot of kind of um, uh, emphasis on the mindset shift. And is that so? And if you could like give us a little bit of a background of what you do <laughs> and how big it is. Uh -huh. uh, we have just 32 uh, employees and uh, we are that doesn't work. Maybe this one. Uh, uh, we have been uh, 32 mm. uh, women employed. Um, our factory is based in Tbilisi and in Gori, as I told. Um, uh, so, uh, your main question? The question is, how did you do it? What do you do and how did you do it? Because as I understood, you do have, exactly, and you apply modern technologies and um, sustainable uh, we practices. Started, we had uh, three sewer. We had very small uh, uh, sewing factory, first time, 2016. And step by step, by our income reinvestment, we grow up. Uh, and uh, also now, uh, two years ago, uh, two years ago, we supported the uh, government agency, and we uh, grow up, and now we have thirty-two employment. Mm -hmm. um, also, I I, I uh, want to tell you that um, uh, advocacy campaign uh, campaign is very important. Uh, we can uh, cooperate with association, also organization who are working about uh, textile industry, and we can uh, uh, organizing um, some advocacy campaign for government, and we can change some. Uh, law or something important to which will be relevant for our industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe also to all participants, then, if we're talking about advocating, raising awareness, who do you think could play a role in that? And how can we increase that awareness on the potential of introducing circularity? And what can be the benefit also from the expert point of view? Expert Maybe. association or <laughs> <something like> that. <laughs> So maybe then we can. <laughs> yes, I yes. graduated uh, one yeah. export, uh, course. Yes, and after when I graduated, I uh, had first export after graduated, mm -hmm. and this um, association role is um, a very important for uh, export. Um, so maybe just. Uh, uh, frame the question again, right? So you are asking about the role of export. The role of export, but also the efforts that all of us can play in then increasing the awareness because we heard a lot about the mindset shift, about lack of understanding. Also, we heard about the availability of the finance, but then not using it, not making That's use of that. Thought, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, well... Um, all the greening is it is, on the microphone? It is on yeah. technology. <laughs> uh going green or engaging into a circle and whatever we call it. I mean re economy, <laughs> um uh, greening, sustainability, everything. Uh that is being turned into competitive at a competitive advantage and it should because it should, at the end, bring the profits. Otherwise, uh, no matter what is the awareness, no matter how kind we are to the environment, mm -hmm. uh, it's not genetically encoded, unfortunately, in us, especially since we just, these are new concepts, and uh, businesses cannot just um, all of a sudden go green just because uh, uh, they are believing in it because there are also some practical issues and challenges um, involved in this process. So, of course, the first uh, um, kind of the most important uh, aspect of uh, going green is um, to have demand or to have the market. Mm. So uh, 
uh, transforming this into competitive ad advantage, knowing that somewhere there is a market for uh, products because you are green. Uh, uh, this is a, a huge kind of um, uh, motivator for businesses. And of course, it's harder for businesses that have been working since Soviet Union in Epic countries, and they have thousands of uh, employees to their transformation is more difficult than, uh, I mean, uh, those who start already green, the small startups and the new companies, right? So, and this big uh, factor is at least in Georgia, I know also in Moldova, they are uh, driven by um, uh, exports, but they work on a very small um, profit margins. Mm. Uh, these profit margins are not enough to buy new competitive advantages because if they sell to developed markets, they also have to implement a lot of standards, um, including um, those for worker welfare, including the safety standards. Um, uh, fair trade, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, other standards are also uh, in place and just uh, uh, satisfying those standards is not an initial investment only. Um, government agency or a donor can help you with initial investment, but uh, first of all, in order to absorb this investment, you need skilled people, right? Mm -hmm. And then in order to sustain these uh, standards, you need the skilled people also to manage and you need to inject the finances over and over again. And unfortunately in Georgia, I don't know how it's in the AP and other AP countries, but... Uh, uh, am I on? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, these standards have to be third party audited, which means that you need to bring auditors from uh, uh, Europe or elsewhere in order uh, to go through like annual or by, I don't know, like maybe once in two years. Uh, you have to do audit, you have to pay for this. These are annual costs, annual charges. And unless you have a very good uh, uh, market abroad in developed countries, uh, then it's not so easy. I mean, maybe it's easy to talk about this right now, but it's not so easy to actually implement And We're kind of pushing this um, uh, companies to go green without giving them the opportunity of a uh, good market. And until they go and uh, uh, into more craftsmanship and creativity, and un unless they increase the profit margins, there is no realistic chance of them going fully green uh, and using the full advantage, even if it's at the end, the financial advantage, right? To uh, like buying this competitive advantage for them. So, um, well, uh, you see, I am uh, representing my members, so I'm always speaking on their behalf. Um, and um, however, maybe I could also continue talk about the what opportunities that is does it bring, right? Maybe that would like logically the, flow. exactly from the point of view of then investment into technologies infrastructure. Does this pay off? Then do we have evidence of it? Maybe from your members, and what could you then uh, say about so that? It does pay off. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the right marketing strategy, you have the right export strategy. And of course, if you go to developed markets where it is appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, the, here we approach the um, topic of market diversification. And of course, depending on CIS market, which uh, fortunately in this sector, Georgia is not depending uh, dependent on CIS market. It's fully dependent on Europe, uh, actually due to Turkish investments, actually, because most of our um, apparel goes to Europe. And uh, since two years already, um, uh, since we signed the diagonal cumulation agreement with Turkey, and now we can use Turkish materials and benefit from uh, uh, duty-free trade with Europe, which we could not do before because um, just for those who don't know, uh, in order to um, not pay duties uh, um, when uh, importing into EU, even though you have a free trade, you have to produce in Georgia, which means to leave the certain percentage of the cost in the country. Since uh, Georgia and also other EAP countries, we don't produce any textile, so we import these raw materials we cannot qualify for this duty-free uh, duty trade. Uh, therefore, this new agreement, which is, uh, I think, also Moldova and Ukraine are part of it, um, uh, this actually allowed us to use Turkish uh, raw material and still um, uh, kind of uh, take the Georgian passport of these uh, products and export it uh, to EU duty-free. So maybe some small margins now will 
um, become some small funding will be released and available in order to reinvest into circular or economy or whatever we call it and uh, like in sustainable practices. And uh, uh, this will probably help them to expand the, into um, uh, developed markets more so. Some um, uh, cash will be uh, re probably reinvested uh, back into um, uh, this company. So this is, I think, one of the opportunities that uh, uh, we are expecting to um, kind of uh, give us some returns in this direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we heard a lot about the investment needed, but maybe, I don't know if you possess this information, maybe Rati or you can add, like, what kind of investment are we talking about? Like, is it the technology infrastructure? And uh, yeah, a little bit more on that. Well, uh, I had to just to find some, uh, <laughs> I found some like problems as well that uh, I'm not sure how all Eastern partnership countries are moving forward for regulation part. Mm -hmm. But what I feel in my country that we have borrowing costs so high. Mm -hmm. So this is also main problem for mm -hmm. not only for textile companies or just general borrowing costs is so high. And yeah, we have some good points in regulation part that, uh, for example, when you do mm -hmm. reinvestment in your company, there is no cost and this is 0% for you. But still, we need more market access because when we are talking about investors, they prefer to find location where they find that place is more friendly for companies who are starting like uh, producing any products it will be textile or any direction of the production. So uh, about investments, we need to, first of all, from the government to support. Yes, I understand, I know the uh, project that the grant is, but it's not so high with the amount of the money. We need more support because for instance, when I talk about high tech, they can find in Georgia like uh, almost 1 million or as a grant, <clears throat> but we don't have any similar amount of the grants for textile or for different directions. Mm -hmm. So I we understand that this is a 21st century and this high tech and this like a, our development way, but still the fashion and textile and just production should be more supported from the government, first of all. Later, after maybe better regulation part, investors or angels or just venture capitals will find some interest that, oh, okay, in Eastern European countries and Eastern partnership countries, there is so friendly regulation that if they will start investments, their profit, net profit, will be higher than other EU countries. Other way, I found that it's also possible to get EU grants if you will start, for instance, to make a branch any EU offshore countries as well, mm -hmm. maybe Malta, Cyprus, because from these countries, it's easy to apply any EU grants. So far, we are not EU countries. Mm -hmm. We have this problem that we are still third countries. So this is kind of the way you can find to access the market as well. But still, I feel that first of all, the main step should be from the government to understand that this traditional textile or any production part is also valuable for Georgians, not only for Georgians, for Eastern partnership to be more competitive for the worldwide mm. and to go global easy than we are right now at this position. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Uh, I want to add uh, about the importance of working with the government because, as mm -hmm. Anna mentioned in the beginning in her speech, Armenia adopted uh, already two years ago the new textile strategy. And uh, it's still in the phase when they're trying to implement it because adoption was only one part. It took us three years to lobby the project. It took us another year to write it down with the experts and everything. But it's already like two years it's been signed and uh, it takes a lot of effort and uh, we need a lot of skilled professionals 
uh, to be able to start implementing it and we're still in the very very beginning of it but there have been a few steps that have been already taken for example from the side of the government it's not always about giving money to the company because sometimes the companies do not know how to invest the money correctly or what to spend it on right so uh, part of the project is about um, bringing skilled professionals so for for instance if a company a textile company they need a certain professional worker that they do not they cannot find in Armenia, they can find in Italy, France, or wherever it is, the government is ready to pay, I think, up to six months' salary for them to be able to bring this person and to teach, to, to do TOTs maybe, within the company to then be able to do it themselves. So this is something that is being already being uh, implemented and many companies uh, benefit from this. Another thing is if big textile companies buy machinery, and they import it for mm -hmm. the production. They don't have to pay import tax. So the government has uh, given this opportunity again to be able to enlarge their production scales. You know, mm -hmm. another thing that we're looking into is about uh, the uh, going through different uh, sustainability um, processes, and especially if we need to. If we want to export to the European market, we need certificates. And certification can be very expensive, especially for uh, smaller companies. So we are trying to do it again together with the government that they can uh, maybe partly pay for the first year, or I don't know, it, it is a scheme that is still in development, but to give some incentives for the companies to want to go through this uh, certification processes, you know? So so governmental uh, help in this case is also very important. So these are smaller steps seemingly, but this uh, can be implemented almost everywhere without uh, the need of uh, too much effort or too much knowledge. But uh, again, for other countries to go in the steps that we did, you know, it's mm -hmm. really important to lobby this to the government and to come up with a similar strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and also this attracts the international donors because one thing is an organization like us, an association lobbying something, but then if you see that the government is on the same page, you know, mm -hmm. international organizations are more ready to invest and help uh, than just on a smaller scale. No, wonderful. Thank you very much for these uh, contributions and uh, also um, amazing to hear, yes, that there is a lot of support from the government, like in attracting the know-how, also in uh, supporting the import of uh, the equipment. We also heard about the different financial programs uh, uh, in Georgia. So I guess then the question... Um, you keep your credit. <laughs> I'm just trying to summarize. So don't forget what you wanted to add. But like, it's incredible to see that there is a movement and indeed it is a transition. So we can't say like something can change overnight, but then the efforts and the investments on the side of different parties are done. I noticed that you had some more um, contributions, uh, Nino. Yes. And then, yeah, <laughs> please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Boz has uh, ex um, ex uh, accent for uh, French Central Forces. Uh, <laughs> right, it told that uh, this investment will make um, government agency. It's not enough. Yes, uh, yes for example, uh, our industry, we use uh, paper um, ex uh, templates. Uh -huh. uh, and in European country, everyone uh, use uh, um, high tech um, uh, d digital and high tech ma ma uh, machinery, uh -huh. uh, and who is very important for uh, de uh, developing um, industry. Uh, um, and uh, uh, if uh, in Georgia we will have uh, one or two. Uh, high tech uh, um, uh, machinery and digital programs, um, uh, industry will uh, be developing more better. Uh -huh. For example, thank you very and much. Also, a uh, funding yeah. investment for uh, co consulting is very important. For example, Agency Enterprise Georgia funded us uh, um, uh, twice per year um, international uh, uh, fair, uh, but we didn't know how to present, uh, how to make. 
our product presentation. We uh, haven't uh, enough uh, knowledge and it's very important. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, also a bit uh, cautious of our time. I wanted to maybe uh, towards the end, ask each of you to maybe reflect, I don't know, a few um, seconds. Um, and uh, uh, maybe to propose to, I don't know, the audience or to conclude uh, for the audience what each of our organizations can do that in that direction because we heard about a lot of opportunities we heard about a lot of challenges and then sometimes it leaves you with the open kind of a feel like oh my god and then what now right because we heard that it uh, is beneficial for companies uh, to go uh, circular to go green there is a potential for export market but then we also heard that yeah, but it's risky and without knowing what market demands and it's a completely new um, area. And then if I'm comfortable already and I can sell here at the end of the day, what is interesting for a company is to have profit and to be able to keep uh, employees um, um, in good conditions, continue paying. So I guess it, at the end of the day, it comes down to the profitability. And we also heard that there are opportunities, there are um, there is a strategy, there is a government support, but then again, it's kind of a maybe transitioning slower than we would like because we want to rush uh, towards the uh, excellency a bit uh, faster. So I don't know, like in your opinion, maybe as a conclusive remark, what each of us then can do and contribute, because it's also obvious that one player cannot address it all. It's important to collaborate with the government. It's important to collaborate with associations. It's important that the private sector is making an effort and reaching out to them for advice for support, for know-how. It's important that someone is talking about what the investment climate needs in the region, not only in Georgia. Unfortunately, we don't have the representation of uh, all our Eastern Partnership countries to uh, bring in the uh, knowledge uh, to this uh, table. But I would really like to ask you maybe to, yeah, a few words. Uh, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> Technology. <laughs> Um, uh, so, well, as an export development association, as the name su suggests, we're developing exports or we're helping the companies mm -hmm. uh, by opening, by trying to open the markets for them. And mm -hmm. we were specifically created um, in 2012 uh, to diversify from uh, Russian uh, exports. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are uh, fully committed uh, to export towards the EU and uh, other developed markets. Um, uh, those who appreciate sustainability and circular economy mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So maybe I would uh, highlight our uh, kind of contribution by a recent project that I think will uh, contribute to circular economy in uh, one way. We have um, uh, Georgia recently uh, was authorized to participate to uh, participate in public tenders in European Union, mm -hmm. uh, which means that like, I think this is a good opportunity also for uh, apparel industry and that this is, I also wanted to announce um, uh, because a lot of public procurement uh, is uh, centered uh, around, for example, procuring, procuring uniforms, uh, fire retardants like uniforms and so on and so forth. We have very good experience and we uh, developed a special guide in Georgian and English uh, to help the companies navigate the uh, processes uh, and teach them how to apply to these such centers and how to take advantage of this. So um, on our side, opening uh, um, uh, markets through education, through access to information, I think this is our role, this mm -hmm. is our duty. And uh, uh, of course, since the um, uh, kind of... Um, we are still, I mean, uh, in a free market, we're talking about the competitive advantages, competitiveness. I think the information is the most uh, useful and expensive uh, and appreciated um, item or asset uh, that a company um, uh, would use uh, on the path to green. Yeah. No, great. I don't know. If Thank I you. <laughs> well, but... So, um, uh... Uh, I think um, uh, that um, uh, if we um, uh, we will be uh, eco-friendly brand, 
uh, it means that we uh, op open the, uh, our European export market. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the first <laughs> reason how how to make, we we make uh, uh, mm -hmm. eco friendly uh, products. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank and, you. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> okay, so as I see, uh, from my view, what I can tell, uh, to be honest, we do lots of with my company. We we do lots of uh, branding for the large companies here in Georgia and for startup as well. And for sure, I'm investing for several startups as well. When I see the uh, companies and future startup projects will be successful. And in case of any consulting, we can do and support also the textile production part as mm -hmm. well, because we have lots of access for different programs and investments, which is not 100%, I'm sure, are not maybe, mm -hmm. there is no maybe information for Georgians, because some of them are difficult to apply because of their Hundred pages and their like um, criteria and all like application details. Uh, mm -hmm. In case what I can offer that we can maybe some make some crossing to see what even with my company we can do help because we are always collecting some data about investments from the EU mostly because uh, they have lots of different uh, investing grants and they are as I told they're bigger than Georgian government they can do to share with us. And it's logical because EU investment is, means that several or maybe all countries are putting money for industry to support. And it's like a one country versus so EU countries, they cannot have like a big grants like they have. So in my conclusion, I can say that uh, I will be happy to support the textile as well to make some consulting and to help to find some way of mm -hmm. investments, because I'm sure the distribution part, market access and uh, doing correct even budgeting for the startup textile production or maybe mm -hmm. middle size of the company is very important part for future success and for future like profits. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you very much. If... <laughs> Mm. So, in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, all the participating countries should really use this opportunity of working together in the scope of the project mm. and uh, try to learn from each other. Because from what we heard today is each country has succeeded in some direction that maybe the others are still uh, uh, lacking. And we should really take the strengths of our partners and try to implement them in our own countries, learn from each other. And we should probably be in contact with uh, different colleagues. Uh, and I already have a lot of questions actually that I'd like to ask okay. later Wonderful. Uh, while, while we're networking. But this is a good opportunity, I think, that uh, the project has created for us uh, First of all, to meet all these people that share with us the same problems. It's amazing how being so far from each other, we can still share the same problems. But again, finding the answers together and sharing each other's expertise should be the goal for the project. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. I guess before we like close close the panel, I would like to ask our facilitators if there are any questions from the audience or from uh, the... Hybrid, okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Thanks. So my question is, uh, why not try to match those high-tech uh, machinery with uh, textile recycling and use those grants for high-tech industry? Who are you addressing to all? Uh, or to... I, I'm addressing to, to Rati, uh, because he mentioned uh, grants for the high-tech industry. So question is, why not using high-tech machinery for to recycle textile and yeah, to create those type of things? Thanks. Thank you. Exactly the same I told, that it's time to make matching that high-tech and the textile because this is new and this is new direction uh -huh. where the world is going because traditional production is already old school. We need something new. 
we need some high tech plus textile plus production. Yeah, totally agree about your opinion. Yes. Wonderful. Do we have any other questions? Uh, the question will be to the older panelists. Uh, so given that the sector is predominantly um, occupied by uh, female workforce, from your perspective, what support system should be in place uh, for women to uh, transit to this, uh, for female entrepreneurs in particular, to transit to this uh, circular model of operation? And from the perspective of big enterprises um, and factories, how to ensure this uh, decent uh, jobs environment. Thank you. Any volunteers to take on? <laughs> uh, the, well, it's a tricky <laughs> question. Um, I don't see how this is uh, uh, the gender issue is connected actually to the, uh, to passing to a circular uh, economy. Uh, well, uh, let's say that in Armenia. I can uh, compliment. Sorry, if there is question is not really clear I could complement and explain because we were talking at the beginning about the access to finance and we know that women experience a lot of barriers to having this access and loans from the banks so for them to transition to this uh, new technology and equipment what would be the support system uh -huh. I don't I I don't think I can answer this on behalf of women entrepreneurs <laughs> <laughs> because I possibly yeah. do not uh, face the same problems as they do. But I want to believe, honestly, that in Armenia, being a businesswoman today isn't much different from being mm -hmm. a businessman mm -hmm. because there is no discrimination, at least in the mm -hmm. banking uh, or mm -hmm. uh, loans or whatever. So if you are smart enough to come up with a good mm -hmm. business plan and mm -hmm. a financial plan mm -hmm. and go to the bank and ask for a loan, regardless of your gender, you will be given uh, the loan. And mm -hmm. uh, at least at least we have never heard of any discrimination or problems uh, on that level. You know, I'm sure there there's still a lot of issues, uh, gender-based issues that yeah. have to be addressed. But when it comes to being a woman, uh, in the business, it's n it's not really something uh, mm -hmm. that challenging these days in Armenia. And I want to believe that in other partner countries, at least on that level, it shouldn't be. But I mean, I, I might be wrong again, because um, I, I, I don't come from a place where I can answer for yeah. other women. I guess probably this could be the case where you already made it and you're successful and you have assets that you can show to the bank to as a guarantee, probably. I don't know. I'm also basing it on assumptions. And maybe then Natalia's question would, would be that if you are a startup, then probably you don't have much to show. But then this is then uh, quite a complex issue of the ownership of um, assets in the family. And then if you can come and guarantee something, because in, and again, not a, a finance expert but then the banking system is looking um, heavily into the collaterals and but yeah maybe we have also but thank you very much uh, Bahan, <laughs> for your honesty <laughs> and uh, yeah if uh, do we have any other reactions or yeah um, so um supported we need every direction <laughs> <laughs> woman <laughs> so uh, financial consulting uh, 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 so, um, mm. every direction, uh, study visit organizing, uh, uh, advocacy campaign, uh, and uh, uh, we need the uh, support. Uh, most of all, uh, small factories and small enterprise. Would would that be different for a small uh, business owner, man to small business owner, woman? Woman. The question was focused on. Woman. <laughs> I don't know men, but women. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have any other questions, or oh, Nina? And also to our facilitators, how much time do we have left for the session? Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, thank you for um, very good and interesting presentations. Do you hear my voice or? Yeah. 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 So I uh, represent also Habitas, uh, another project. It's local economic development project. And I, I have a question to Nino. Uh, because our project uh, mostly works in the regions, in the localities, municipalities, and it's um, 
uh, one of the important um, direction of our work will be employment of youth, women, and disadvantaged groups. And uh, I have a question to me now, uh, if the, she has any vision or does she, uh, if you see any um, uh, like uh, potential of um, employment, uh, individual people in the rural areas, like uh, having some networks because it's uh, sometimes difficult that uh, these uh, rural women come to your uh, factory work in the uh, life city. So I see a, a good potential for employment uh, of rural women in this industry. And if you have any um, like idea or uh, perspective of uh, expanding uh, your work and working in the rural areas as well, having some network, if you have thought about it, it will be interesting for us. Thank you. So I can, thank you for question. Mm -hmm. I can tell uh, you how resolves this problem in my region. Um, uh, so a qualified worker is very big problem. Whole country, not region, whole country also. Uh, and uh, I create uh, the, uh, so course, and I offered. Uh, I find some on the motivation women in my uh, who, uh, who live in my city and region. Uh, I will study during three months, and after uh, when uh, they graduated, uh, I offer them job. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from 20, 2016 years till uh, today, I trained uh, 436 women, uh, and 46% um, uh, is employed. Not only my uh, factory is a uh, self employment and uh, other factory. 32 uh, women in my factory. Uh, I find this uh, way. Um, I create a special module for professional uh, course. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's every year uh, we have uh, uh, 30 or 40 graduated uh, grad uh, women. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> I have um, uh, a uh, comment or maybe a proposal uh, because uh, textile and apparel sector is very, very uh, huge sector with many topics and many informations related to this sector. Uh, I propose maybe to create um, a library maybe online mm -hmm. for all participants of this project. Um, I uh, mean in this uh, library, uh, access in Drive or mainly uh, OneDrive, we could uh, have information related to legislation, national and international uh, certification, why not uh, study cases in our countries, Balkan um, countries, Eastern Partnership, mm -hmm. uh, our outcomes. Uh, why uh, I propose this library? Because uh, here in this uh, uh, room, we have uh, person from different uh, stakeholders, investors, uh, in training centers, and uh, okay, uh, here we meet all uh, all of them. And after that, I I think I will must to ask Anna or Elena, uh, could you give me the phone of uh, participants from Macedonia or other countries? Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we must to have a contact list uh, with uh, participants. Uh, we must to, to put in this library some outcomes. And after that, I think it will be more uh, easier to contact all of us. And uh, at, the, okay, at the end of 2024 or 2025, or maybe longer term, uh, we could use this library for all of uh, us. Uh, when we speak about trainings, we speak about capacity building. But uh, I think all of us, we must to capacity um, in different direction, maybe in sustainability investment, maybe in trainings, maybe in design. Uh, and uh, I think we, it, uh, it will be very useful for all of us.
Thank you very much. I think you're also like adding to the point that Vahan made in his conclusion that it's very important that we learn from each other and then we continue uh, enriching uh, um, the exchange, but also then keeping the trace of that wellness of uh, wealth of information in then the shared platform. So thank you very much. Uh, but this was more like a comment and recommendation. I don't know if anyone wants to react or we open for other questions, recommendations. Maybe one more. One yes. more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the microphone, please. Come on. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the, all the panelists. My name is Nana. I represent uh, organization SEN, Environmental Organization. I work in circular economy mainly within plastics and food. Uh, it's very interesting to hear where we are at within textiles. And mm -hmm. we are also continuously dealing with the problems related to e investments, of course. However, um, globally, uh, impact investments are really taking off the market and investments in circular economy are being captured by um, huge institutions, uh, financial institutions. And there's definitely a big shift uh, towards uh, ESG indicators being incorporated in the investments and in financial sectors. And shareholders are also starting to demand this because sustainability reporting has become um, mandatory uh, in, in the EU. Um, I wanted to ask how important do you think it is to uh, work with financial institutions to advocate for green investments or uh, green funds or to incorporate some of these indicators within their portfolios. Mm -hmm. Are you addressing the question to everyone or? Is yes. This, yeah. Anyone would like to take the question? <clears throat> How important it is to advocate for green finance with the financial institution? I, I can answer yeah. because I have the best English for uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's wonderful. Uh, so uh, I forget because I, I, um, I have I know English very well. Uh, I forget um, uh, that our main donor is Sen, and our first uh, cutting machine, uh, who is our main main machinery for recycling processes, funded and uh, funded by Sen. Uh, thank you again, and uh, then create uh, together we create the first recycling factory uh, in Georgia. Mm, wonderful, but uh, I can say about our experience. Uh, four or five years ago, we implemented actually a big project with our partners from uh, the UK, uh, an organization. It's called. Um, EcoAge, and EcoAge is a sustainability consulting uh, organization. They work with uh, Caring Group, with Cartier, with Gucci Group. Actually, uh, they are one of the leaders in the industry. And for two years, we worked with them. They came to Armenia, and we were trying to address the textile waste uh, problem in the big uh, textile factories. We have around 20 big producers, textile producers in Armenia. And uh, we came up with a roadmap on how the textile waste could be recycled, actually. And uh, we, the result, we, we had the roadmap, we gave it to the Ministry of Economy, we gave it to the Ministry of uh, um, Environment, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> and to the big companies. And no one did anything, actually. So again, the problem is that someone had to implement it, you know. Or they had to come up with a joint company that would do it for them because uh, seemingly it wasn't a very difficult thing to do. Buy machinery, find a place to put it, gather the waste, recycle it, okay? But someone had to organize it, someone had to do it. No one wanted to do it. Neither the government nor the company separately, and they didn't work together. So the problem remained um, unsolved. But one of the main problems is that the calculations showed that even if all companies participated in investing, bringing the machinery and uh, building the facility, 
because Armenia is so small, and even though the waste seems a lot because it was something like 100 something tons yearly, if I'm not mistaken, my, maybe my numbers are not accurate, but uh, this seems like a lot of waste. But to keep the facility busy to, for 12 months, mm -hmm. it's not enough, you know? Mm -hmm. They could uh, recycle this in uh, three weeks, and then for the rest of the year, the facility would be just standing there. Mm -hmm. And that was a big problem. So either it has to be done like regionally, so one facility <laughs> can recycle all waste from Georgia, Armenia, Iran, mm -hmm. and everywhere that they have big scale production. Um, otherwise, it's financially not uh, mm. uh, like. I mean, to invest into this really doesn't make sense. Which which is very sad to uh, come to this conclusion. But I mean, uh, it's mm. true. And again, if we look from the perspective of businesses, they're like, yes, okay, we're going to save some money because we get something back from the waste of the textile, you know. But in the end, maybe the investment is bigger than what they get back. Yeah. No, thanks a lot. I guess we are out of our time. We're just... In, okay, so thank you very time. much for the very audience, good. for active engagement. If there are more questions that we would like to welcome you to take them in the networking event that we have following this session. I would like to thank our panelists, especially for the conclusive remarks where they did emphasize on the role of each organization uh, in uh, advocating and collaborating and exchanging the knowledge in actually supporting companies in diversifying their markets, also from the investment point of view in thinking about what could be the mechanisms for developing uh, the investment uh, climate in the textile and apparel sector. And we also had some observations from the audience on how important it is uh, to not to forget about inclusive um, uh, gr uh, green and economic development in the textile um, and apparel sector. And it was also quite symbolic that we ended with the, talking about the regional opportunity and regional scale, because indeed countries, especially in the South Caucasus are rather small, um, uh, but then even Eastern Partnership region as a whole maybe is not that big, and it would make sense to have uh, regional initiatives, regional businesses, regional enterprises to have the scale and to have the prosperity. Thank you very much for your contributions. Thanks a lot to the audience, and yeah. This was a great panel session. Okay. I thank you, Elena, for leading it. Yeah, uh, It was really interesting, and uh, just a very short comment. This uh, this field uh, obviously is not an exception from any other field in our region, in our countries. Uh, having striving for social and economic uh, development and uh, getting investments and so on, and shifting to ecosystems. And uh, fr from me, from uh, from uh, from the citizen of of one of the countries here, really interested in social and economic development listening to to both sides here uh and it's it's uh at some point elena was saying oh my god this is the oh my god situation having so many things to complain maybe get paralyzed around and uh, but on the other hand uh, thanks for showing that there are leaders looking at them as the call for action and try to consolidate all the resources possible on the regional, national, and uh, on the level of this event, maybe. And thank you for this and uh, for showing this. And uh, now we have the lunch break. A deserved good lunch is waiting. Uh, it's upstairs, Fitini area. You will easily find it. And so have 90 minutes of good lunch and networking. Thanks. Many thanks. <laughs>